Hey, I alluded to this uh, in the video I did with uh, Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife last year, and it has to do with how to quickly break down literally any lake to help you find bass at any time of year. You do it utilizing what are called topographical maps or topo maps or bathymetric maps. It's a great way to quickly determine a couple key areas that will position fish for two of the four seasons. And then the other two seasons happen in very similar areas. Uh, but I wanted to go over that with you so you can pull up map on your phone for crying out loud the night before or jump on your computer. Do this same thing so that when you get to a given lake, even if you've never fished it before, you can determine the time of year so you know what pattern the fish should be in. And you can break down, you can do this with your with the topographical map, and you've got a, a starting point to start looking for cover and to start looking for these fish. Let's jump in, and I'm just going to show you uh, some simple tricks I do so that when I go to a lake, I know kind of areas to start my search. And I'm talking even if you do not have electronics, and especially if you do not have electronics. So let's get in on this. In my opinion, the single best site to find topographical maps that exist for Washington State is still Northwest Fishing Reports website. So I'm going to go there first. Uh, just Google on over to home on Northwest Fishing Reports. And right here next to their, their logo says maps. This is the most comprehensive collection of topographical maps for lakes in Washington State you're going to find. I just absolutely love this aspect and i've alluded to this in past videos where i used to print these out literally and take them with me I orient myself once i got to the boat launch and i kind of had an idea of where to go i didn't you know back before i had electronics and this stuff's worth its weight in gold i mean so much effort and so many resources have been put into these it's just amazing so thanks to everybody at northwest fishing reports for compiling this data for all of us to enjoy but this is literally a gold mine and then once you kind of break them down the way i'm going to show you it'll just make make such a difference uh in your bass fishing outings it's not even funny and you can do this with electronics obviously you know it's right there in front of your face when you're on the lake so if you have electronics Hopefully this will help you uh, learn to utilize your electronics a little bit better as well. So let's get started here. So all a topographical map is a structure map. Now, I've talked about this numerous times. Structure and cover are the two most commonly misused terms in all of bass fishing. And it can confuse new anglers, and it really frustrates me. The dock is not a piece of structure. It is a structure. It is not a piece of structure. And there's a, a major difference. When you're looking at a topographical map like this little one I pulled up, this is structure. This is all structure is. Structure is the bottom contours of that lake. It is, if you drained all the water and scraped everything clean, it's all the points, the, the little dips, the humps, creek channels, flats, drop-offs, ledges, bedrock area, hard bottom areas. That is what structure is. That is all structure is. Cover is everything else. So when you add those two things together, you end up with little high percentage areas all around a given body of water. You know, this little map right here is pretty indicative of a lot of the small lakes that you're going to encounter where it doesn't, I mean, this one actually gets to 40 feet deep. That's not bad, but there's just not a lot going on. You know, it just looks like a little cereal bowl. So what I want to do is show you how I utilize this to really draw myself into uh, getting to a lake and going to a spot and start fishing, depending on the time of year. You can do this on your phone as well, but open it up in some type of an editing so that you can color. I always like to start out with red. Okay, so you look at this and you're thinking, all right, it's got everything along the shoreline is shallow water. It's got a deep hole kind of off in the middle there. Pretty indicative. So what I like to do is look at, at any of the areas that are 10 feet or shallower. And this basically, yes, the entire shoreline is shallower than 10 feet. However, if you look right over here, this area right here, which is a, a much broader area, that is a large flat. And this area back here is also a large flat. I'm going to call this right here also a large flat. These areas are going to represent your primary 
spawning areas. Why is that important? It's important because the spawn happens in May. So given that now you know on this specific lake where the ideal spawning areas are going to be, you know where the bass are headed. So once you determine that at a certain time of year the bass have to be here because they need to spawn, you've got basically an area to head for and then work your way out of depending on the time of year. It's also going to be a primary feeding zone in the fall. So you've now covered two seasons just by doing this one edit to a topographical map. Okay, now the interesting thing on this little lake is the next color I will go to is uh, green. So my green, now I'm going to go to the next zone, which is the 10 to 20 foot zone. But what I'm looking for is anywhere where if you can look on, follow that cursor and you see this is another kind of an underwater flat right here. Lines closer together so it indicates steeper structure. So this is technically right here, it's, it's kind of a broad, but it's a point. And if you can see, I'll go to the next color. I like to use blue, and that point extends. Points are a travel corridor for bass. They will use the points to swim up and then branch out and go kind of along the shoreline and follow the cover, hop cover, to get to their spawning grounds and to move up and feed again in the falls. And that deep hole in the middle could very well be, especially if this is a tiny lake, that could very well be their summer and winter grounds. So all of this really is going to be determined by the size of the lake that you're going to fish. Water temperature is going to dictate and oxygen content is going to dictate all the, all the, these fish do. On a small tiny lake, that cold weather is going to have a more dramatic impact and the heat of the summer is going to have a bit more dramatic impact that could drive the fish deeper. On large lakes, they can still go really deep, but they, they can mitigate their temperature and their oxygen levels a lot more so or a lot easier because there's just more areas to find that are are more comfortable for them to be in at a given time of year versus a small little pond like this where they don't have a lot of options. The part of this that I want you to pay attention to, though, is, is the white. And I know you're probably wondering, why is the white important? The white is important because the white is kind of dead water. You don't need to spend a lot of time out here poking around. You want to hit the areas that are closest to the spawning zones. What I've found in being around, you know, utilizing electronics and, and really chasing these fish all year is so a lot of these fish will stay as close as they can to that spawning area. So what they're going to look for is the nearest deep water. Once they're done spawning, they're going to back off back into the green zone. They're going to get around any cover that's available. So your grass, your grass lines, outside weed edge, inside weed edge. The inside weed edge is where the grass terminates in the shallowest water and the outside weed edge is where the grass terminates in the deeper water. Any other cover you can find, the edge of lily pads, logs, whatever can be down there, rock piles, a creek channel even. The bass will pull, they'll get right on that stuff and they can stay there all through post-spawn into the summer and through the summer, move back up shallow to feed in the fall, and then back out there when it starts to get winter. And as the oxygen level changes in the winter, and as the water gets colder in the winter, they can either stay there or they can retreat even farther and go deeper and get more comfortable. What will change their positioning is overall depth of the lake and available cover. So if you have electronics, you can literally drive around, and if you, there's nothing, 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 then you see a log, you need to mark that log. I don't care what depth it's in, but if you've got expanses of water, there's nothing on the bottom, and then all of a sudden you find a log or an old whatever, somebody threw an old Christmas tree in there, or you know made a brush pile or something, mark that. And I guarantee you, in your post-spawn, summer, and winter months, there will be fish there at some point in time during the day. You just got to get them to bite. All right, let's do another one. Okay, this is Big Lake in Skagit County. This lake right here is a little interesting. You can't read the numbers really well, but uh -oh, I'll go over it with you. So again, I'm going to take this lake and I'm looking at it and I can see all the contour lines and you can kind of make out like this right here is a 10 and that's a 15 and that's a 20. Okay, you follow that cursor. 
So again, I'm going to take my red. Red is critical. I use red on this stuff because it's just such an important life cycle for these fish. I want to know where those spawning areas are immediately. Um, also, you see where these lines right here are a little farther apart? So I'm going to go ahead and mark that as well as a spawning area. All this here where it's really tight together, that's steeper bank. There could be a fish or two that spawns there. It's just not what's considered a spawning flat. So I want to go all the way down on this specific lake to the south end. And I know from experience that this entire friggin' area is one big lily pad infested spawning area. I only went to five feet there and I'm going to explain why. Bass can spawn out to 20 feet of water depending on water clarity. Water clarity does not exist <laughs> in this lake. So that is something you're going to have to determine once you get to that area. I'm making, I'm making this right now because I know the lakes. I know that it's going to be more conducive to considering five feet or shallower spawning area. The next I'm going to go back to my green. That's all out to 10 feet. It's really grassy. A really good staging area for these fish. And then same thing up here. I'm going to do the same thing. And you'll see what starts to become noticeable. Look how wide this area is. That's going to be a nice little staging area for these fish. They can sit there. They're comfortable. Not a lot of stuff bugging them. And they're good to go waiting to move up and spawn. Another thing to remember is not all bass just rush up and spawn at the same time. And not all bass in a given lake spawn every single year. You will always have a mix of fish. Some will be up looking to do the spawn thing and some will be out and just up looking to feed on because uh, bluegill and pumpkin seeds also spawn that same time of year. So there's food all over the place in the spring. You want to keep that in mind as well as even though fish are up and they're kind of going through their thing and doing the spawn, you still have fish around that you can catch without monkeying with uh, with the ones that are spawning or, or actively sitting on beds. Okay, so again, what we've done is we've created hot spots. Like you're going out to start fishing in the spring, getting ready leading up to the spawn. Your red and green zone is where these bass are heading. They're coming out of that deeper zone. Now on this given lake, I'm already catching fish in 12 feet of water. So they're kind of right on the border of that blue and green. They're, they're moving out of a little bit deeper. But if you look at this lake, almost the entire expanse of this lake is 15 feet of water. There's only this one section right here. This whole section right here is the only section that's deeper than 20, than 20 feet. That deep area right there, critical in the winter, I'll catch fish out of there, and the summer. And especially due to the amount of boat traffic that this lake sees. I'm going to come back and fish it in the middle of the summer and the middle of the winter. And I'm going to work from there shallow. In the spring, I'm going to do just the opposite, especially once we get into March. I'm going to start in the red zone and work my way deeper and try to intersect these fish. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you adhere to that, you get up in that five foot zone, you start working your way backwards to deeper water. And just if you don't have electronics, you're going to have to feel. So I highly recommend like a, a three quarter ounce uh, Carolina rig or Texas rig and drag that bottom and just look for stuff. And if you touch something, move your boat over and triangulate with the bank on where you are so you can hopefully stay on that piece or throw a marker buoy out, whatever you got to do, that's going to be fairly important. Now again, all the bass are going to go to this one spot and wait in line to do their thing. All along this shoreline, you can see a pretty extensive little five foot area. They can be on those spots and they can spawn anywhere where they have the a hard bottom, uh, the correct depth. So they can spawn anywhere along a given shoreline as long as they have those things. But those big flat areas are where the majority are going to go. So you increase your chances of tying into them by going to the larger spawning areas first and then work your way back from there in the springtime. Start in the deeper water in the winter and work your way shallower. And summer, start in the deeper water and work your way shallower. And you're just going to up your odds. That's all this is about. It's not the, the Bible by any means. This is just upping your odds. The main thing I want to get across to you is that this is not every bass is going to be in this spot. Every bass is going to be in that spot. This is just higher 
percentage areas and places where you're more than likely to tie into a fish. So it's just about increasing your odds. Okay, so here's another lake. This is uh, Lake McIntosh in Thurston County. And this is another one of those, a long, skinny lake. Not a lot of structural features, you know, a couple and no real deep water. I have a lake like this uh, north of me. And the cool thing about these lakes in the spring they tend to warm quicker. Uh, they'll lose their heat a little quicker overnight. They don't really retain their heat as good overnight, but they will warm quicker if you get a sunny day. These lakes will start producing fish in February fairly consistently, and they will produce fish all year. The bass are a product of their given environment. If they have deep water access, they're going to utilize it. They don't, they're going to be a different fish because they're going to have to acclimate to their body of water. They're going to be born, raised, and get big in their body of water. So that is what they're going to be accustomed to, and that is what they're going to react to. The lake north of me that's really similar to this one, those bass stay active more so throughout the year than the lake where the largemouth can get into deeper water. They can be a little harder to find and a little harder to get to bite. The fish in these smaller, shallow lakes in the springtime and in the fall can just be dynamite uh, fishing. In the fall, it's tougher because what happens in the shallow lakes is the vegetation goes crazy and then you can hardly navigate and get to the cool spots or whatever and the fish get a lot harder to find. In the early season where that vegetation has died back, and where the water level has come up and you now have access to stuff on the shoreline. Lakes like this one, I'm telling you, in March especially and into April, these things can just, uh, they can just be dynamite fishing. Okay, so real quick, I'm going to do the same thing, even though if you look at this lake, I mean, there's 10 feet right there. You see where the cursor is. So that's massive. <laughs> So on this lake, because these fish are so accustomed to the deepest waters only 11, 12 feet, I'm going to highlight that five foot zone. And I'm going to consider that to be not the only spawning area, but the primary, that's the prime real estate for spawning. And then there, you've also got a uh, outlet right there as well. That's what that arrow represents. That means current. There's going to be a little bit of nice uh, current going through there. And what current does is that is oxygen-rich uh, water because that moving water creates more uh, turbulence, and that creates oxygen, and oxygen is good. So again, because this is a shallow little lake, these fish can spread out. So they've got a lot more opportunities, and they've got a lot more to choose from in, the ter in terms of spawning flats or spawning areas. Okay, so you get the idea, and as you can see, in this lake, there's really, it's hard to make a bad cast uh, if you're fishing the shoreline of this given lake, just because of, in the springtime, you've got these expansive areas that are conducive for spawning, and these expansive areas that are great places for them to stage up to spawn, and you've got this little deep water hole right here, but... You know, if it was winter time, if this lake's open in the winter, those areas that show that deep spot and then the area just next to it that's still white, that is where I would target and then I'd work my way in. You've got a spawning area and a small point near deep water. That's an area where I'm going to, I'm probably going to launch and go directly across and start fishing there. And the most obvious thing that jumps out is this point. Okay. That point is your structure. This anywhere where these lines are a little tighter together is structure. It's a little bit steeper bank. And, you know, those are areas to pay attention to. And then come April, those fish are going to be, you know, you're the majority of your fish are going to be on these areas right here uh, looking to get up and, and bow chicken brown bow. You know, just gives you an idea. It gives you a visual reference and something to start your search with. So I'm going to do one more real quick. And it's, it's a little more complex Okay, so here we have Loon Lake in Stevens County. We'll just give you some ideas you got to apply to your own lake. Uh, but you can see here the deepest hole over here is 100 feet. So that's quite different than the little mud puddles that we've been looking at. These fish, this is most likely going to be cleaner water just because it's got the depth. Okay, so there you have primary spawning zones of 5 feet or less, a flat like this that's a structural feature this is a, a pretty expansive five foot or less area 
but it's still a structural variance, so uh, flat. Okay, so I end up with something that basically looks like this. So one kind of just mental thing that I use just to keep myself looking for specific spots on topographical maps is flats equal feeding, steep equals sleeping. Now I know <laughs> bass don't sleep, fish don't sleep. I get that. But what, what I mean is the steeper, like a ledge or a steep drop off is typically an area that a, that a bass is going to use as a, a transition zone. They can ease up and move towards the flat to feed. They can pull back off and rest. They can that's where they can winter. It's where they can summer. They can just hang out. Now, obviously, they're opportunistic feeders, opportunistic hunters. So if something comes by or drops in front of their face, they're going to be like, meh. If it looks good enough, they're probably going to eat it. So you can get them to feed if you find them. But for the most part, when they get off on that steeper structure, it's, they're just chilling out. And they're going to suspend off that and, and they're going to hang out until they're ready to feed again. They're going to move back. They're going to look for a nearby flat. Let me show you a couple things on this map. Okay, so zoom in on this uh, north north area here. And again, you see an outflow. So it's going to indicate moving water. And that doesn't mean current, like you're going to see rapids or something. You might see the vegetation under the water kind of bowed over a little bit. It's just indicating that there is some type of movement going on in that water right in this area. So you see the big red area, spawning flat, the big green area. They can also spawn there if it's clean water and a hard bottom. If it's dirty water, chances are they're going to prefer to be a little shallower because the light penetration is going to warm up water temperatures to be more conducive to their eggs hatching, basically. And then you see the blue area. But the parts that are most important for winter and summer, follow the cursor here, are right here. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to highlight it in yellow this time. Why are those areas important? This is where the bass are more than likely going to come off deep cover in the 25 to 45 foot range. If there's cover out in this area, that bass are going to stage up there pretty much in the winter and summer, but they're going to be kind of more closer where that steep bank drops off. This is what is considered a transition bank. A transition bank means the bass are going to use that area to quickly transition from deeper, more comfortable water up into the shallows or up onto a flat to feed. Transition bank, I want you to think 45 degree angle. That is a structural variance. Transition bank, that 45 degree water, a ledge, a drop off is a structure feature. Flats are structure features. So these are things you want to keep in mind depending on what season it is. If it's early season, like now through April, these flats are what it's all about. And you want to start shallow and work your way deeper. As we get into May, June, and early July, when we're into post-spawn, the bass are already starting to move out kind of into that green and blue zone looking for grass or any kind of cover they can get around to recuperate from the rigors of spawning and from all the bozos snagging them off their beds. These transition banks, when it hits summertime, in the heat of the day, they don't want to be up on those flats. It's just, it can be a little too much unless there's enough vegetation to hold some of them up there. But fish are going to pull back onto these transition areas and then in the evening they're going to work their way back onto the flats. That's why night fishing can be so good. The sun goes down, things start to cool off, those bass will start to work their way back up and uh, get on the flats to feed. They like to feed on flats. So as we continue looking at this lake, what you'll notice is if you look over here, this is another area where you've got a big flat uh, spawning area, a green, a big flat pre and post spawn area and then the blue is you know nearby if there's nearby cover there it can hold bass but if you look just above that what you've got here is steeper area where all these lines are closer together and then you've got a huge flat right here and then you've got what this represents is like a little underwater point where this gets deeper so bass can get out on cover in this little hole right here and anytime they want to feed they just roll up on this flat in the summer and the winter months and their chances are they're going to find forage there so when spring starts to come they're going to work out of these areas 
they're going to come up this little bit steeper bank and then start to filter up onto these flats. The endpoints of these flats are a great place to start because you can catch those fish in transition. Once they're up and on the flat, they're going to mill around, find cover, they're going to find hard bottom, they're going to find lily pad roots, wood, and they're going to start to set up rocks and start to set up and get ready to spawn on their favorite thing. You've now got travel corridors for them to get up onto those areas. You know, here's another spot right over here where there's a nice little area they can move up without expending a lot of energy in the early season to get up to get into this pre and post spawn area and then up into that little spawning area right now and i can guarantee you there's going to be rocks around this little point right here same situation down here where you've got where all these lines start to come together this area right here is going to be great in summer and winter because the bass can change depth and get comfortable without having to expend a lot of energy or move a great distance. It's a place to get in and just look for cover options on the bottom. Find, you know, cover that might hold fish in the winter and summer months. And then when fall rolls around, you know where they're going. And then again, right over here, you've got, you know, great steep area right in here. That's going to be a summer and a winter target because they're up here in the spring and fall. They're going somewhere and they're going to go to the nearest available deep water cover so if you don't have electronics you know i get it but there are plenty of tools out there that can help you there are even apps uh lawrence has an app i think navionics that you can download onto your phone and you can find this stuff and those are the features you want to look for points steep bank areas transition bank areas ledges drop-offs humps creek channels this is all structure that you want to look for and you want to find areas where cover is on that structure. So find your grass beds, find your rocks, find your logs. Whatever's been falling in or sank in that lake is going to be covered to a bass. Shoreline as well. You know, look for those docks that terminate in the deepest water close to your spawning flats. And it's just higher percentage areas. I'm sure there's good fishing all over this lake. If you break it down to these key areas, it just eliminates a lot of water. If you look at the white area of this lake map, not all of it, but a lot of it is pointless. You're wasting your time. If you focus on finding the cover in the areas that you've highlighted, you just stand a much better chance of intersecting fish. And on some of these spots, you get in a really good spot. You can sit there all day and the fish will come and go. New fish will move in. Old fish will move out. You can sit there and, and pick them off just sitting in one spot. It's really important to go out and look for these areas and to spend your time on these areas. Spend your time in the productive water, depending on what season it is, versus just running down the bank and fishing everything you see. It will help you catch fish in times where it can be considered pretty tough to catch fish, and it'll help you find these key features and these key cover and structure combinations that will hold these fish at different times of the year, every year, year after year. And you can go back and in the winter, you'll know where to go and you'll know, you know, the area to fish and the cover to target to see if you can get one to bite or more to bite. In the fall and the spring, you're going to know where they're heading to spawn. You're going to know the areas to intercept them, what to look for. And it's just going to help you maximize your time on the water better versus just aimlessly fishing down a bank. I highly recommend Northwest Fishing Reports. Get on there. Look for uh, the lakes in your area. Look and see if there's topographical maps for you. You'll be surprised how many maps are on that website. It's unbelievable. Mike Carey and all those guys over there did a great job of putting that, that resource together for all of us utilize it it's just it's a great place to go and find these things and really help dial in your bass fishing the bass are on the move now they're going to be moving up they're going to be heading for that shallower water to warm up get their metabolism going and get ready for the rigors of spawning so they're in that transitional phase where now they're going to move up they're going to stay shallow longer and then move back out at night and pretty soon mid-march to to uh, all the way through april they're going to get up there and they're going to stay up there because it's time for business know the forage in your lake perch patterns bluegill patterns pumpkin seed patterns trout patterns all stuff that's that's really conducive to uh, getting on these fish over the next few months and honestly throughout the years 
I hope this helped you. I hope they gave you some ideas. And it's something fun to do. You know, you're sitting around on your phone and you're tired of looking at pictures on Instagram of everybody else catching fish. And you can't wait to be back on the water. Be proactive and, and break these places down. Be ready the next time you go out to go target specific areas. So use the resources available to you and get out there and just approach it a different way, you know, and, and uh, be a little bit more specific with your with your fishing time and hopefully you increase your catches and decrease the time you spend just, you know, practicing casting. Get out there and catch them.